have a soft background in civil engineering and economics. And I was always very much active and involved in sports up to a certain point when I realized that um, it was actually music that I wanted to be working in. I've always played the piano and enjoyed playing music, but at a certain point I just wanted to shift my focus and, and be on the uh, production side of music. Uh, at that point in time I started my, my tone master studies in Berlin. I also spent some time abroad in the U.S. and uh, one year in Paris to complete my studies. Uh, I was lucky to experience the last good years of the classical recording business in the late 90s and I was uh, given the opportunity to work for a Time Warner company to make recordings both in Europe and also in the U.S. Uh, I was pretty much in charge of the technical side of the recordings with the Chicago Symphony Orchestra and New York Philharmonic, both with Kurt Mazur and Daniel Barenboim at the time. And that basically got me into the game. Becoming a producer was more of a natural development. I started out being an assistant. I was rolling miles and miles of cables. I was driving trucks to set up uh, recording equipment uh, in basically any part of this world. Um, eventually I moved to the console. I was engineering, I was mixing. I was also heavily involved in post-production, editing, mastering, and just over time, it happened that I was starting to work with the artists, or also artists were asking to be working with me. We have our own recording kit that we send to the venues where we have to go. Specifically when we work with orchestras or we produce operas, uh, we also do a lot of live recording or live streaming, which has become quite popular recently. An orchestra session is very exciting because so many people are involved and you all have to put them in the right place, in the right mood and make something special happen. And it takes everybody's participation to to make it happen. Um, the nice thing about orchestra sessions is that they are actually scheduled. So you have a very well-defined time frame and session times, so from 10 to 1 and that's it. Uh, there's some room for negotiations. If you need another 5 or 10 minutes, that's fine, but basically that's the window that we have. Okay, very, very, very good first take. Thank you. I'm very much managing the time for everybody. So I have one eye on the score, I have one eye on the, on the clock, I speak to the conductor, I speak to individual musicians, and very quickly I have to realize where this project can go. I mean, what is the level that is realistic? What is the maximum that we can achieve within the given time frame? One critical aspect of evaluating what we do and what actually comes across from the recording hall through the microphones and through the cables has to be done on speakers. So the speakers are in many cases, when we travel, the only component that is a given, that's a, that's a benchmark for, for making a proper judgment about our work. So when we come to uh, let's say a theater, a church, um, any kind of venue, and we have to improvise and basically build a professional recording environment for the time of the production, the speaker setup is, is basically our anchor. So if we hear something that we don't like, it's not because of the speaker, it's because something is not working out. So it's a very genuine uh, indicator um, that we'll have to keep on working to make it better.
Well, we were always using monitors from Adam for location recording. And when we built the studio, we wanted a setup for surround mixing purposes that would relate to these speakers. So whatever we do on location should be translated one-to-one -to, -one to what we do in the studio and vice versa. So that's when we looked into the pencil system and uh, Adam was nice enough to supply us with a set to, to try it out and uh, we kept him here, never send him back. <laughs>